Tech today, and today we are going to look at uh, basically an ECG signal or an electrocardiogram. Uh, ECG or EKG is what you can typically measure. So you've all seen kind of these doctor shows that are all on TV. You get the kind of spikes. You, do, 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 do. Again, we don't want to be in that range anyways. Uh, so uh, the EKG measurement is really uh, one that is incredibly uh, kind of fascinating to me. So you have kind of these like little electrodes, right? That you put on, uh, you wire to someone's chest. So right at the top of your skin, and what you measure there is a voltage, and that voltage is the voltage produced by your little cell with some organelles. So uh, does anyone know, any bioengineers or mechanical engineers, what is kind of the uh, maximum or like the limit uh, of the potential that can be generated by a cell? Well, hopefully you've read my uh, lecture notes. So cells can typically produce a potential of around 100 millivolts. So that is, uh, again, it's just kind of related to biology. You can, a biologist or chemist can tell you exactly what's the rationale and the, it has to do with all those ion channels and firing. And uh, Anyways, they can tell you about that. So typically a cell, this is my cell, can generate around 100 millivolt uh, potential. So uh, look at the signal that we're measuring here. So this is an unfiltered uh, uh, ECG signal. Actually, I want to go to my, um, actually, let's look at it over here. This is an unfiltered um, ECG signal here. So this is the signal that I'm measuring, uh, basically voltage, millivolts as a function of time. What's the voltage measured at the very top of my uh, kind of heart, you know, uh, you know the, the electrodes that are placed on the top of my chest? I'm measuring about one to two millivolts. So from the, the potential that's generated by that heart cell or whatever that cell, we can measure the voltage through all that skin and blood and tissue and mucus and all the other biological mess there. So this is, uh, you know, unbelievable that we could actually measure these things. It still, you know, blows my mind to this day. But if we want to kind of, you know, see these kind of spikes on our curve, or if we kind of want to measure our heart rate and kind of other properties, uh, again, that biologists and doctors need, we can take these voltage measurements and then do a Fourier transform. So EFT or CFT, if, uh, in this case, in a bit. Do a discrete Fourier transform, and I can get Again, these are my harmonic coefficients. Uh, I could get my frequency spectrum and see, okay, around, you know, what should your heart rate be typically? Well, if you're a runner, it's 30 BPM. So BPM, so 30 hertz beats per minute, or, you know, a little bit uh, lower here. So beats per minute. So your cardiac, uh, you know, typically you're probably in the 60, uh, 70 beats per minute range. But your cardiac signal is around here. Uh, in this kind of range here. So we can see uh, and actually use some uh, critical concepts that this is where we want to kind of measure. Everything else, we have some low frequency noise here, also high frequency noises at um, you know, much, much uh, higher ranges. There. Um, so what is the signal that we want to kind of, uh, we want to focus on this signal and analyze here. So we can actually improve uh, and filter our signal by saying, okay, I want to focus from this frequency regime, this is my cardiac signal and these frequency uh, regimes right here. So again, 30 beats per minute, so 30 beats divided by one minute, 60 seconds. So again, you can kind of see these ranges here. But anyways, um, this, is our cardiac, this is our cardiac signal range. Um, so I don't want this low frequency noise, I don't want the high frequency noise. But now I can see from my frequency diagram, okay, well this is the range that I wanna be at. So now, everything below this, I wanna filter out. Everything above this, I wanna filter out. And you could do that by basically building these high pass and low pass filters Again, you could kind of um, discuss that a little bit more with your uh, circuits professor. But uh, it's pretty impressive. So actually, let's go and see. So this is the unfiltered signal here. And then if we go a little bit further. So this is our unfiltered ECG signal. But once we do our frequency spectrum, identify our cardiac range and filter it, we see this much cleaner signal. And again, we could do, we increase our resolution. We increase our signal to noise ratio. This increases, and why is that important? Well, if we have a cleaner signal, now we can analyze more you know, exotic uh, parameters uh, for doctors, and so hopefully identify irregular heartbeats and a myriad of other things, again, that uh, all your biologist friends can kind of tell you about. Uh, so that is kind of, again, this is all, this is what we're gonna learn how to do. We're gonna do Fourier analysis uh, in this course, uh, and you could, again, apply this to a myriad of different, again, it could be building bridges. It could be biological um, uh, examples as well. And then the next time, again, make better diagnosis, high resolution of our signal. So 
our friend, my favorite doctor, TV doctor, House, uh, can get to work. So this is not only for engineering as well. We're going to look at the differences in musical instruments and also vocal um, sounds as well in the next video. So uh, for analysis is ubiquitous. It's important. So learn about it well. So that's about it. Uh, we'll talk to you all next time uh, for some musical analysis. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye.